Hey, what's up guys? This is Nick from Nick Expose. On this episode, we're talking about Kodak's T-Max 3200, which if you guys have been following social media, you know that Kodak was teasing over the last couple of weeks about bringing a film back. And uh, just yesterday on Friday, they announced that they're re-releasing their T-Max 3200, which I am super, super excited about. You guys have heard me talk about it on the channel multiple times in the past. This is my all-time, all-time favorite black and white film. I'm going to talk about that in this video. I actually had this video planned before Kodak even started teasing about uh, releasing everything. A couple weeks back, I was uh, sharing some photos that I shot out in Chicago using T-Max. It was all expired stuff, and I'm going to talk about that in this video as well. And I was just getting floods of questions in about how I expose this stuff, how I find this stuff, and all sorts of different questions. So I had this video planned to, uh, to be able to address all that, but now we could actually kind of talk about some of my excitement uh, with Kodak re-announcing uh, or re-releasing this film moving forward. So if you don't know what T-Max 3200 is, it's a black and white film stock released from Kodak. It was actually discontinued back in October of 2012. Uh, it's actually, so it's called P3200 because it's pushed to 3200. It's originally an 800 speed film, but it's not just any old 800 speed film. It's an 800 speed film designed specifically for pushing. I don't know why manufacturers do this. I'm sure there's all sorts of science and reasoning behind it, but regardless, I absolutely, absolutely love this film. Uh, the grain and the contrast that I've gotten from this film is absolutely amazing. I'm actually going to put one of the very first photos that I shot with this film up right now. It's of my niece, and uh, this was the thing that got me hooked. This was the image that the grain structure in here, the contrast in here, got me absolutely hooked on this film. I started acquiring as much of it as I possibly could. Uh, years ago, that image was shot back in 2014, and, uh, and I've been shooting it ever since. I've had a large stockpile of it. Uh, most of the time, I have about 30 to 35 rolls in my film freezer. Right now, I'm down to 18 rolls, so Kodak was well-timed in launching uh, this new release because uh, I'm running low on it, and I'm going to continue shooting it, and I'm excited to be able to get some fresh stuff. So this roll here is probably my most fresh roll, if that makes sense. So this is actually from 2011. I said uh, October of 2012 was when they discontinued it. Most of the stuff that I have uh, is 2004 and before, I believe. Uh, there's all sorts of different boxes that, that it came in, a um, couple different variations of this box here, and then a lot of the stuff that I have is, is from the older, older, uh, um, time. This is 2000, and uh, a lot of the stuff is from 1999, 1998, uh, all sorts of different um, canisters that it's coming in. One of the big things that you'll notice if you have any T-Max 3200, if you come across any of the expired stuff uh, that was discontinued and, and everything is, uh, I don't know if you could see, but there's a difference here in color. Uh, this one has more of a purple magenta hue to it. This one has more of a, a flat gray or a neutral, almost greenish tint on the backside. Um, but the thing is, when you actually pull it out a little bit, you'll start to see that there is some purple in there. I don't know if you can see that on here, but uh, one of the ways to know whether or not that this is uh, good enough to shoot is if you pull that out and if it's all this gray muted out tone, then chances are the emulsion has gone to absolute crap. I had a couple rolls that were like that to where it was just, it wasn't cold stored, it wasn't stored properly, and uh, the emulsion just breaks down and it starts to dry out and it gets super brittle, uh, super fragile, and it just isn't light sensitive as what much as it was at one point. But as long as you got this nice uh, color cast of purple, you're good to go on shooting it. And some of the stuff that you could find is still purple all the way through. But before I go further on any of the technicals, I'm not going to get too technical with this video, but uh, I do want to talk about what it is that draws me to uh, T-Max 3200, why I prefer it over some of the other films, what I plan on doing it with them re-releasing it. Am I going to get rid of HP5 and just go all T-Max 3200 because it is my all-time favorite? Uh, I'm going to answer those right now. Um, so the big thing about T-Max is the T-grain the structure. So T-Max has a T-grain structure, Tri-X has an X-grain structure, uh, HP5 has kind of a mix between the two. It has more of a, a round X, like, 
it's a, it's a different kind of grain structure, but uh, regardless, the T structure is meant to be and was designed to be from Kodak an extremely, extremely sharp grain structure. So it retains sharpness even when the grain goes up. We've talked about it in the past about um, just regular T-Max, T-Max 400. If you push T-Max 400 to 6400, 12,800, anything like that, it's still going to retain its sharpness to where uh, Tri-X and, and HP5 on some occasions will We'll start to uh, get these clusters of, of grain, which doesn't look bad. It just isn't as sharp as some of the T-Max grain structure is. Uh, Ilford's Delta uh, tried to emulate and, and kind of reproduce that T-grain. Uh, I do think that there's a pretty decent difference there between those two uh, from T-Max to Delta. But the thing with T-Max 3200, at least all the expired rolls, is the grain structure was super, super heavy handed. And if you guys know my work and if you guys know who I am, I absolutely love of grain. The more grain, the better. I want people to be able to uh, like feel my images with their eyes. I want it to be kind of a, a braille for the eye or, you know, like a coarse sandpaper. And, and I just want there to be this, this texture that, that really draws people in. So like I said, I shot a few super expired rolls in Chicago a few weeks back. And uh, these were extremely expired. These were the emulsion was starting to break down, but images still emerged. And what I absolutely love about it is it, it starts to transcend over to almost like a pointillist uh, drawing to where it's almost a series of, of white and black dots, uh, like as if an image was built of salt and pepper. And I just really love the, the drawing aspect of this. It almost looks like a, a illustration or a sketch or, or something like that. And I love it when I can uh, bring some of my artwork over to where it starts to question the idea of whether or not it's a photo. Obviously it's a photo. Obviously it was made with film. Um, but if you see in these images, uh, it does kind of go more towards like a drawing aspect. There's kind of a texture that you don't get with other film uh, or with a fresh emulsion or anything like that. So uh, one of the things that I absolutely love about shooting at least the stocks that I've had of T-Max 3200 is it's really kind of this crap game, uh, this roulette of whether or not you're going to get a good roll or a bad roll. And I say bad roll lightly. Uh, obviously, like I said, there's parts and times to where the emulsion is completely broken down. Um, that's an absolute bad roll, but the other bad rolls uh, actually give amazing, amazing results as well, as long as you're willing to embrace the imperfections. But even when it's more fresh and reliable uh, emulsion, it still gives this texture. It still gives this, I, I, I don't know, it has a certain soul. It has a certain flavor to it that that you know is more coffee than it is tea, if that makes sense. You guys know that I like to describe things in a in a very weird terms, but there's a grit to it, there's a grain to it, there's a, a substance to it that has a, a soul of almost like a you know the nostalgia of putting on a record and having that that noise that goes on in the background, that imperfection, that that subtlety, that's a, a baseline for everything else, uh, and everything else is built on that. And I absolutely love that. If you look at some of these images that I'll put up right now, there's just this subtle grain structure, and sometimes it's not so subtle, uh, but it's just this romance, this this warmth that really kind of draws you in, at least in my opinion. I know a lot of people that don't like this stuff. I know a lot of people that, that want clean and clear images that would rather not have, you know, super, super grainy images, and that's fine as well, but the contrast in the grain that I get is so much of what I'm searching for in my images, and it's so much of something that I can't can't reproduce with HP5 or even Triax or any of these other films because when you push films and, and when you start working with different films they do have different grain structures they do have uh, different clusterings of grain different contrast and tonality within the grain in the micro contrast and all these different things that that really really add the characteristics to the film at least I believe these become different tools within the toolbox. So, you know, I have a lot of people asking, okay, now that T-Max 3200 is coming back out, are you gonna ditch HP5? Absolutely not, I'm gonna shoot HP5, uh, continue to push it two stops, and that's probably gonna be my daily shooter, but there are times where I would much rather use 
T-Max 3200 and get this beautiful, beautiful warmth of grain and tonality and range. Uh, most of the time when I'm using T-Max 3200, I'm shooting family, I'm shooting my nieces and uh, my godson and, and just the people that I absolutely love. I'm shooting Emily and, and my dad and my siblings and, and I just absolutely love capturing family with this film for whatever reason because there's a warmth, there's a love, there's a, uh, you know, a poetic range that's I don't know, displayed, at least in my mind. I, I don't know. This is all up to interpretation, but this video is me sharing my thoughts, and these are a lot of my thoughts on this film. Nearly every single one of my favorite images taken of my nieces was shot with T-Max 3200. I've shot plenty on HP5. I've shot plenty on Portra. Uh, I love those as well, but there's something about the romance and just the, the warmth of this T-Max that when I look at images of my nieces on T-Max, when they got that grain, when they had the the substance to them. It just makes me enjoy it even more. It makes me want to go back and shoot more of it with my nieces and shoot more of it with Emily and shoot more of it with my dad and all these different things. You know, I, I just absolutely love capturing the ones I love with this film. But then I also enjoy bringing it into my street photography, bringing it into my abstract work and just piling grain into the image. I do think that there's a point to where grain becomes uh, an artistic expression. Grain becomes a part of the image uh, and a part of the image that you don't necessarily see when you're shooting and it causes you to kind of think some pre-visualization in picturing what it, it's going to look like when it breaks down into just a grain structure versus a, a tonal range, if that makes sense. So I, I would love to hear you guys' thoughts on all this stuff down below. Maybe you guys don't agree with anything that I'm saying and I would love to hear that as well. Maybe you hate this film stock, maybe you're not excited about this, um, but I am extremely, extremely excited about Kodak bringing this back. So a couple things with that and their announcement, they say that it's going to be available in the States here in March, so that's next month, that's coming up real quick. And, uh, and I've had a lot of people say, oh we'll see, we've been waiting on Ektar, uh, Ektachrome for so long, but they actually have some of this stuff in people's hands already, so I guarantee you it's going to be in stores. Uh, Cinestill, actually, I'll, I'll link to their website down below. They actually have it on pre-order for $6.99, so $7 a roll, whereas I think it's going to be selling, it looks like it's probably going to be selling in most stores for about $10 a roll, which, if I'm looking at all of these, I mean, this was $10.99, this was... Uh, $9.69, that was about the average of, of what it was being sold for when it actually was in stock in stores before. So uh, I don't think that that price is, is too outrageous or anything like that. Uh, I do know that they said on their frequently asked questions over on Kodak's uh, Alaris um, website is they're only planning at this point to release it as single um, rolls of 35 millimeter, so 36 exposure rolls of 35 millimeter. Um, they did say that if there's a big enough market for it, they will uh, try to bring it out in 120. What I'm really hoping for is that they're able to bring it out in bulk uh, and do 100 foot rolls. You guys know that I absolutely loved and prefer to bulk roll um, my film just to kind of save some money, just to be able to, uh, to load as many frames and as many exposures as I would like uh, on my rolls. But I do hope that they're able to uh, to bring that out in a 100-foot roll. A couple other specs uh, that I want to cover here is they're saying with the new emulsion, uh, and it does sound like they're trying to tweak the emulsion a little bit. I could be wrong. It could be the exact same emulsion, and maybe all these things are to be true about the last one, but it does sound like they kind of strengthen the emulsion uh, because they're saying that it could be pushed to 25,000 ISO uh, with no issue if it's developed in their T-Max. I'm sure it could be developed in all sorts of different things. Um, but... 25,000 ISO, like I said, it is an 800 speed film that you're pushing two stops to 3200. So I get a lot of questions on that. And let me talk about how I expose uh, these rolls of T-Max 3200. So uh, these expired rolls, I shoot at 800 ISO, and then I develop for 3200 ISO. But the development times for 3200 ISO are actually the push development times. So what I'm doing is I'm overexposing 1600 one stop, 800 two stops. I'm overexposing the film by two stops because it is so far expired. On the new emulsion with the fresh, you know, fresh batch and it's not expired, it's not degraded any, um, you should be able to shoot at 3200 and develop at 3200 with good results. It'll probably be pretty contrasty. I would suggest shooting at 1600, giving it a stop of overexposure and then developing at 3200 just to uh, open up the shadows a little bit and kind 
kind of give yourself a little bit more tonal range to be able to work in. Again, that's up to personal preference, but if you're experimenting with it, try shooting it at 1600, try shooting it at 3200, try shooting it at 800, and, uh, and just see where it brings your tonal range and then make your decision from there. But with all these old expired rolls, I shoot them all at 800 ISO. Uh, I'm doing Sunny 16, so I'm shooting at 1 500th of a second and then doing the F16 to, you know, whatever. And, uh, and then I develop it, like I said, as if it were 3200 and uh, giving it that overexposure. If you're gonna push it even further, uh, then again, it's you can add 33% every time you push. So you go from 3200, if you push it to 6400, you add 30, uh, did I say 32? 33%, I don't know what I said, but 33% more time uh, to pushing it. And Kodak might release times, there may be times over on the different apps that have different times. Um, but if you add 33% more time to your development process, uh, you do that every stop. So you push to 6400, you add 33% more, you push to 12,800, you add another 33%, um, but this film should be super, super versatile, especially with the fresh emulsion, um, to be able to push, like they said, all the way up to 2,500 ISO, or 25,000 ISO, um, but it should be extremely, extremely versatile to push. I know this video is starting to get long, so I'm gonna try and wrap it up here, but uh, I am super excited about Kodak bringing this back. I think that this is extremely, extremely exciting for the film community as a whole, whether or not you like T-Max 3200, just the fact that uh, Kodak is announcing that they're bringing back more films, just the fact that they're investing more and more into the film photography community is a good thing. Also, Ilford on Instagram, Ilford started firing back at Kodak with their Delta 3200 as if it never left and all these different things. I think that this is a good, good thing as well to where now we're getting a back into the place to where these guys can have these playful um, battles of film stocks and, and going back and forth and just having these, these playful competitions because what I think it will do and what I hope it will do is drive prices down a little bit more and drive it back into a place where it's super, super easily approachable uh, for any level of photographer, for any level of budget. Uh, I know that Kodak just recently dropped their prices on Triax bulk um, from like $120 down to $75 a bulk, uh, at least on B&H, I, I know for sure. Um, but I think that that's super exciting. The fact that these manufacturers are starting to duke it out in a playful way uh, is gonna drive and, and make the market much more competitive, which is gonna be beneficial for them, which is gonna be beneficial for us, and which is gonna be beneficial uh, for the film photography community as a whole. So I'm super, super pumped to see uh, <laughs> Ilford shooting back at Kodak, and I, I hope to see kind of some playful uh, fight in there. And then hopefully Fuji will start to see all this stuff and they'll start to get their act together. I'm not, I'm not counting on that one. I don't expect Fuji to, to put film back into their lineup anytime soon, unfortunately. One thing I just remembered that I do want to point out with T-Max 3200 is uh, when you develop it, it will come out in the, the base of it. Normally when you see, you know, Tri-X or HP5 or Delta or any of these uh, fresh emulsions, when you develop them, um, there's a bit of clearness to them. There, there's a good contrast range uh, within the film. Uh, base when you develop it, but T-Max, at least all the old expired stuff, is going to come out with a pretty like gray and, and sometimes dark gray um, base. Oftentimes these films, if they weren't uh, uh, stored properly in a fridge, you should be storing your, your film in a fridge, and especially with the T-Max 3200 or any high-speed film, you should be storing in a freezer, uh, would be even better, but um, the film starts to, to fog over, and there is a bit of fogging going on, so uh, you will see it comes out with a gray, like deep tonal range base, but at the same time, it still will scan and print in the darkroom just fine. So don't let it scare you away. It's uh, it's pretty normal with this older film stock. Uh, I'm curious to see, because I've never shot fresh emulsion. I've always shot expired T-Max 3200. So I'm interested to see uh, if it's gonna still show up a little bit like that with fresh emulsion. I don't, I, like I said, I've never experienced it as a uh, fresh film stock, but um, don't be deterred if, uh, if yours shows up a little bit more muted and grayed than some of your other uh, film base. I'm gonna put up some of my all-time favorite shots here at the end of the video from T-Max 3200. This is from a variety of different cameras. Some of them shot uh, back in 2013, what did I say? Uh, all the way up to now. Uh, I just shot a couple rolls 
like I said, this last month of my niece's birthday party and out in Chicago and just I ran out of HP5 for a little bit. So I was resorting back to my uh, T-Max 3200 um, stock. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love to hear you guys' comments down below. Are you guys excited about this announcement? What are you looking forward to most? What other films would you like to see Kodak or any of these other um, film companies start to bring back? And uh, if you have any shots of T-Max 3200 yourself, I'd love for you to share them with me over on Instagram at Nick Exposed. Shoot them to me in the DM or tag me in them in the post or anything like that. But I'd love to see what you guys are creating with this film stock as well. So uh, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and check out some of the other videos. Uh, I talk about creative process and just film photography related stuff. We go deep into uh, just thinking about our artwork, thinking about our photography. And I hope that you would join our community. I hope that you would join the conversation. So check those out, like and subscribe down below. And I look forward to hearing you guys' comments in the comments down below. Until next time, go and push yourself two stops. Check out these photos at the end, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace!